Hey, Remore Nurses, welcome to Monday Motivation. We're gonna be talking about lung cancer in this class, but honestly, I gotta keep it very brief. So we're gonna consider the principles of cancer in general, and then we're going to do some practice questions, and then I will let you guys know where my next destination will be. So don't forget, as we're studying, the main goal is to make sure that we're being consistent no matter what. And I, I really hope that um, throughout my time here in Kenya that I'm demonstrating that excuses are only as powerful as you give them the power to have over you. So if you are committed to the plan and not to your mood, you will do well. Okay, so let's just stick to the plan, not to our mood. Um, when we talk about lung cancer, when we talk about lung cancer, it is essentially a mass that is found in the lungs that is associated with smoking, okay? And it is one of the most common malignancies that you have worldwide. However, when it comes to cancer, we have to be able to distinguish between cancer of the lungs that's fast growing and cancer of the lungs that's slow growing. So I want to present that slide to you. Hi, everybody. Hello. Okay, so um, there are two types of lung cancer that I want us to be mindful of. We have small cell lung cancer, and that is aggressive and fast growing. And then we have non-small cell lung cancer. And this is a slower progressing cancer that has many other categories. You have the adenosarcoma, the squamous sarcoma, adenosquamous sarcoma, and large cell carcin car carcinoma. I apologize. Carcinoma. Let me do that again. Adenocarcinoma, squamous carcinoma, adenosquamous carcinoma and large cell carcinoma. Those are the ones. All right. So um, as we are trying to classify lung cancer, we're going to be looking at the TNMC, and that is the tumor that is there, if there's a presence or not, the size and location. Also, if there is any lymph node involvement, metastasis, and other clinical manifestations. Uh, there are many treatment options for lung cancer, depending on if a patient is going to go towards the direction of surgery or chemotherapy or external radiation, where we're going to try to put a laser on that cancer tumor to shrink the size of it. And so the treatment option will be based on the patient and, and what their healthcare provider suggests. Now, I know this is a quick overview, but hopefully we are singing quick facts and reading. Time, inclex question time. So our first question is this. A client was recently diagnosed with small cell carcinoma and has been experiencing obtain brain MRI, three, facilitate radiation therapy to the brain, or four, discontinue chemotherapy. What is going to be the best choice what about small cell carcinoma? Hmm. And so the patient has had headaches and double vision. So the correct answer here, I know you see it. It is absolutely going to be number two, obtaining the brain MRI. So symptoms from the nervous system involvement can include headache, vomiting, hemoparesis, or cranial nerve deficit. So we want that MRI to help us. Let's go on to question number two. A current smoker was aware that lung cancer can develop due to smoking. Of course, the nurse teaches the client on secondary prevention for lung cancer, which is, okay, so we're talking about secondary prevention. Is that number one, administration of neoadjunctivic therapy? Two, administration of high-dose vitamin C. 
three, provide nicotine replacement therapy, or four, provide health education on how nicotine affects the body. So remember, with secondary prevention, what is the focus? I hope you are saying also, number three, nicotine replacement therapy. So what we're trying to do is we are trying to reduce, we're trying to reduce the exposure to patients. So patients already smoking, we need for that patient to come off of the cigarettes so that they are not in a higher risk for developing lung cancer. Question three says this, a client with lung cancer has recently completed a round of chemotherapy. The client is becoming unstable, exhibiting increasing shortness of breath, low oxygenation saturation, and an altered mental status. The nurse has applied oxygen and raised the head of the bed. What is the nurse's next priority action? Okay, is it number one, notify the healthcare provider about the client's condition? Two, reassess the client's respiratory status mm -hmm. and oxygen saturation. Three, administer a PRN dose of pain medication. Or four, prepare the client for intubation in case of further deterioration. So your patient has had a round of chemotherapy and after that they become unstable, they have shortness of breath and low oxygenation. Okay, so I already put in here, raise the head of the bed, put oxygen on the patient. So you can't choose that one. What's the next thing that the nurse should do? Oh, this is a good one. And that answer, I'm seeing the comments. If you picked, it's time to, to reassess. Yeah, you did an intervention. You did an intervention. So we need to see if that intervention is going to be helpful to the patient because we put oxygen on the patient, we raise the head of the bed, we wanna reassess the respirations, the oxygenation status now. That is the priority. Did you see that one? That one was kinda of tricky. Okay, I think I have one more. Mm, okay, a nurse is caring for a client with advanced lung cancer who is experiencing increasing fatigue, a persistent cough and weight loss. The client expresses concern about feeling weak and having difficulty managing daily activities. What is the most nurse, what is the most appropriate nursing intervention to address the client's concerns? Number one, encourage the client to engage in light physical activity. Two, teach the client about how oxygen can help reduce shortness of breath. Three, suggest a high calorie, high protein diet to improve strength. Or four, provide education on energy conservation and prioritizing activities. So you really have to be able to see this one. And I hope that you all see it because there is one priority that sticks out here. What do you think? So I see it clearly and it is number four, providing education on energy conservation and prioritizing activities. This is the most appropriate one because you need to be able to address what your patient is actually talking about. Your patient is expressing concern over what? Over feeling weak and managing daily activities, the daily activities. So this is something that we need to be able to address in our answer. Very, very important that you see that. Well, I just had a few questions for you on today because of course we gotta get it how we get it. And this is the grind, so. I hope that I was able to do lung cancer, some sort of justice and just are spending time together and looking at our priorities when we have patients with lung cancer. As we journey on through the week, I just want to provide motivation that, um, I don't know, I guess my motivation is that sometimes when you make a plan, it doesn't always go exactly how you want it to go, but you have to be willing to be flexible. You have to be able to adapt to change because ultimately the, that's the, the joy of living is if everything was planned out 
and it went always how you want it to, there would be no room for growth. So growth for me today is being able to have the support to do Monday motivation in the back of a moving car. And I think that's pretty cool, actually. So like I said earlier, what I want you to do, stick to the plan, not to your mood. That's my Monday motivation. So no matter how it's going, no matter how tired you feel or how, how discouraged you might be, our plan is Mondays and Wednesdays. We gather together. So God bless you all. I am headed to another city and I am looking forward. I am very much looking forward to meeting the next Remar nurse. No. <laughs> Um, so one thing that happens when you are in Kenya is anytime you go into a city, the police have to check your car to make sure that there is nothing dangerous, which makes total sense. However, however, we carry a lot of stuff in our car because we have water, we take the classrooms, we have t-shirts, things like that. So when he opened the trunk, of course, all those things fell out. And that's just what that is. And so you guys got to see it. This is part of the grind. Thank you. Yes, Mark is showing you, Mark is showing you the t-shirts that we have. <laughs> so everybody that's coming to the class is able to get these t-shirts, which are really cool. I love them, um, actually. Okay, so I am off, guys. Thank you so much for... Thank you so much for just rocking with me today on Monday as we review lung cancer. Uh, we will be back on Wednesday doing, um, I think we're doing cardiac on Wednesday. Okay. So I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.